When Ron and I first got together, I hated spending money. Ron loved spending money. And so it was constant conflict between us because I would say, where's that $20? And Ron would say, well, hey, well, I went to the store. Remember that meal we had last night? That was that $20. And I would get so frustrated because for me, money represented security. Welcome to Tyro TV. I'm Ron Tiarina. And I'm Kathy Tiarina. And today we want to talk to you about finances and the impact your finances have on your relationships. A lot of times couples don't realize how important it is to discuss finances and talk about things as simple as a bank account. Because just the word bank account can actually infuse distrust in your relationship. So how do you navigate through that? How do you get to a place where you are on the same page in every area of your life, especially finances? You know, when you're in a relationship, this bank account thing is really serious. But if you've been living a life where you've never trusted a bank or you've never put money in a bank or you never wanted to take time to understand how a bank works, and now all of a sudden you're in a relationship and now you want to talk about, it's time to save money, but I don't know how to do it. You know, this can be kind of scary. It can be kind of uh, where you got to put your trust in somebody else to hold on to what you've earned. So before Ron went to prison, we had a joint checking account and we both spent every single penny in that checking account. We had to constantly be at each other like, stop, don't spend that $10. There's only $12 left in the bank account, right? Well, then after Ron went to prison and came home, I had a bank account in my own name because Ron wasn't there. So I had to take him off the account and it was just me. So I'm used to managing all the finances. I know exactly what's in there. I know where it's going every minute of the day. So when Ron came home, I mean, it was kind of scary for me to say, wow, I'm going to add him back on the bank account, give him a checkbook, give him a debit card. And now we have to communicate. We have to be on the same page because we are both co-owners of this account. And I had to really come to a place of discipline and self-control where because prior to going to prison, we didn't have very much, right? And what we had was we would hold on to it like it was uh, depending on our life, right? Our life was dependent upon that, whatever it was. But now coming back, there's, everything's accessible. Everything is at your fingertips. Everything is cheap. You can buy whatever you want. It's hard to even shop for people for Christmas. Why? Because everybody has whatever they want. So you have to come to a place of where now you got to have self-control. And this is what we want to talk about in your finances. Do you have self-control when it comes to saving money, having a budget, and not um, living beyond your means? Are you able to actually have a discussion about bank accounts? Like we're just going to really concentrate on that for this episode because we've known so many couples that it just it infuses them with anger, right? As soon as you say bank account, well, I'm not letting him on my bank account. I'm let it, not letting her on my bank account. They, don't need, they do not need to know how much money I have. Well, where is the trust in that relationship and where is that relationship? So when we come back, we're going to talk about why it's so important to be on the same page when it comes to your finances. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. I'm your coach, Tremaine Hall. We're looking forward to getting you to the next level in where you want to be in fitness. Our whole method is to make you mentally tough and also physically strong. We're going to start with dynamic warm-up, lower core, upper body, and also full body blast. Get ready to take your fitness to the next level. Tyro Fit and Stenos. Welcome back to Tyro TV. Today we're talking about finances and the role money plays in your relationship. Because you can't just ignore it, right? Money is a big role. Money plays a huge part in your relationship because if you don't have money, there's stress. If you have money, you're deciding how to spend it, there's stress. If you don't know what your partner has or they don't know what you have, there's this like distrust in your relationship. There's all kinds of signals that money puts off in your relationship. And if you don't talk about it, then that can actually disrupt your relationship and cause all kinds of contention. You know, prior to me waking up or prior to us waking up into a, becoming a healthy adult and having a healthy relationship, my mindset was, what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine. Oh, that was totally his relationship right? with money. It, I own it all. I own it all. But, but that which we owned, it was so little, you know, it was like, it, it, if we, whatever we had, whatever money we had back in the day, we would, I would blow it mm -hmm. on stupid stuff. I wouldn't pay my bills. 
It was like right. Ron was afraid to actually have a relationship with money. Oh no, I have money. I got to get rid of it. <laughs> right? Well, it was it was because I didn't I went and didn't want to go without, mm -hmm. right? Because this poverty mindset, this this entitlement mentality or this welfare mentality really binds you and keeps you incarcerated mentally where you can't grow. You can't grow with your money. You don't know how to make your money grow. All you do is live check by check. You hold on to everything you buy. You don't know how to you don't really know how to dream and therefore you're incarcerated mentally and, and you can't even work together and allow your money to work for you. So as we talk about money, we talk about bank accounts in your relationship, this is a really key area to sort out, okay, how are we going to manage money together? So what we're really talking about is coming into agreement on how you are going to achieve your life's goals. And so money is part of that. That's a tool in your relationship. A lot of times couples get so attached to their own money that they hold it from each other and then they start getting secretive about, you know, well, I'm going to buy this, but I'm not going to let my partner know because I want to maintain control over this part of my relationship. That is a huge red flag that there's not trust and security in your relationship. So as we work with couples, we find often that the couples that are the most distraught, the couples that are the most conflicted have the most secrets around their money. And that's why we're going to talk about that today. You need to take a look at it. You need to set your emotions down and say, okay, why do I feel so emotional about spending? Whether it's I don't want to spend money or whether it's I spend all of my money. You see, healthy couples work within their relationship to set a budget together. You know, when you're thinking about money, this is learned behavior. This is something that maybe you got to go back to school. Maybe you got to take a course online. You need to do something in order to grow within your finances to understand how does it work and how do you make your money work for you? Because if you're going in this with no education, mm -hmm. no understanding about finances, you will continue to do what children do. You, you're, you're, pocket. You're burning a hole in your pocket mm -hmm. constantly each and every day. And that's what kids do, yeah. right? They see the candy, they go up there, they spend what they have in their pockets, right? And so as you become an adult, you become a grown person and you've never really understood the discipline that it takes to hold on to your money, uh, protect your money, have your money work for you, grow your money, right? You will spend it with whatever you see because you're in that mentality of where I see it, I want it, I'm getting it. So as you talk about money as a couple and you really look at bank accounts, one of the questions you have to ask yourself is, are we going to have a joint bank account or are we going to have separate bank accounts? And before you actually build enough trust to have a joint bank account, you have to work through all the issues, the spending, the saving, the miserly looking at money, whatever it is that's happening in your relationship individually. And as a couple, you have to take a hard look at it so that you can actually come to a place of saying, you know what? We are going to be interdependent. We're going to put all of our money in one place because our goals align. You see, when Ron first came home from prison, and remember I had this whole bank account all to myself for 15 years. I managed all of it. I had all this fear around it. And so my gut reaction was just to give everything and let him have total control so that it, it would reduce conflict for me. It's like, you know what? If I, if I have to share control, I'm going to be constantly worried about it. It's going to create stress in our relationship. So he comes home. I push the checkbook and everything to him and said, there, you manage the bills. You manage all the money. You just give me an allowance. But because I became wise while I was incarcerated, <laughs> right? I pushed it back to Kathy and I said, listen, you've done a really great job while I've been away, right? And since I've never managed this, this amount of money, only $18 a month, right? And this was just a little more than $18 right? and, a month. And I said, you know what? How about you show me what you've been able to do successfully and teach me what you've been able to do. Now listen, now listen, fellas, this is where you humble yourself in your relationship. If you don't know, then humble yourself and learn and grow together because you don't want to mess up what somebody's creating in something beautiful, right? So Kathy was able to save money, not check. She was no longer living check by check. This is really important because prior to me going to prison, not only did we live check by check, I was getting a job, <laughs> you know, going without money, going just a job every day. We couldn't other, even make it to check to check. You know, we were just struggling. But now when you come to a place where you humble yourself and say, you know what, I want to learn how to manage money. I want to learn how to grow together so that we don't get in debt, so that we don't have the repo man come to our house, all these things. So anyways, when we come back. We're going to talk, talk about more about why it's so important to have that joint check account and what it signals. So stay tuned and we'll see you soon. Hey, sweetheart, you got that blank piece of paper that I need? Sure do. 
right here. Well, that's not a blank piece of paper. Uh, yeah. It obviously is a blank piece this of paper. This is not a blank piece of paper. Why is it that you always give me something that's not what I want? You know what, Ron? It's obviously blank. I do not I want this. This is not about. what I wanted. Oh, no matter what I do, it's always wrong. You what find are you fault talking in everything. about? It's obviously this is not a blank, blank. Piece of paper. I am sick and tired Why of arguing all the time. It's never this. good enough. You never I'm tired to what I of you. I'm done. Just stop. Wow, what did you just witness? I'm Ron Tiarina. And I'm Kathy Tiarina. And together we have been working with tens of thousands of couples for the last two decades. And we have been helping couples understand that nobody's right and nobody's wrong. They're just each seeing it from their own perspective and unable to bridge together. So when's the last time you were in a discussion with your significant other or your spouse and you had a disagreement over something so small that turned into something so big? So many of the couples we work with have this experience where they argue about something because they only see it from their own perspective. So I'm looking at it from my vantage point and guess what, frankly, I'm only wanna see it my way because it's my way or the what? The highway. Over time, what happens is these issues start to pile up and they create more and more distance between couples. And so now we're arguing about every small thing because we have to defend our perspective. As we began arguing, it really was apparent whose side I was on. I wasn't on her side and she wasn't on my side. In fact, we were on opposite teams. We became enemies and what was more important for us was to be right than for us to actually understand each other. When couples do this, they continue to erode their relationship. What you need to do is get the issues out from between you, move them out in front of you, and remember that you're a team able to navigate through anything together by seeing all sides of the issue. Now remember, there is nothing more important than us. If you are sick and tired of being on opposite sides and arguing over every small thing, then this is exactly where you need to be. Now it's time to introduce you to a program that's gonna teach you how to resolve these issues. In this dynamic program that's internationally recognized, you're gonna learn how to resolve conflict, how to get on the same page and listen for understanding. Couple Communication, which was written by Dr. Sherrod Miller and Dr. Phyllis Miller, will actually help you be on the same team and recognize the power of resolving conflict together. One of the greatest tools that you're gonna embrace is really coming to the understanding that what you've been doing is natural, but this is learned behavior, and we're about ready to take you to a next level on how to enhance your relationship. Now, if you're sick and tired of having all of these petty issues come between you, if you are exhausted from every time that you have interaction with your spouse, it turns into drama, then this is where you wanna be. You wanna sign up for couple communication. You wanna take this program together, and I guarantee you that you are going to love it. Before I even came, um, I had controlling issues. I had problems with actually being able to talk to my fiance. And since I've been here and learned new experience, um, efforts, I can change my life now and I can actually listen to her and know what to help her with. Information that was given was was really helpful. We'll be able to use it in our everyday life for our marriage, for our children, and everything else. So really enjoyed this weekend. It's helped me to be able to let down, let down guards that I was not willing to let down because now I see a change in him and I see him, you know, becoming a different person than he was. He's more uh, excited about the whole project and, and now we're, we're thinking like, you know, we want to be a part of something like this. Stop telling yourself that tomorrow you're gonna do better. Stop saying to yourself, tomorrow I'll find that program. Today's your opportunity to do something, not only for yourself, but for all those around you. In couple communication, you're gonna learn a brand new process. This process is gonna help you avoid ever fighting over petty stuff again. It's gonna take you to a new level in your relationship as you learn how to listen for understanding, to clearly articulate and share from your own experience. You're gonna get on the mats, you're gonna have notepads, you're gonna learn skills that you're gonna be like, wow, if only I had known this at the beginning. It's not too late. We are all on this journey. We are all on this continuous improvement plan. But guess what? You have to take the first step and let today be that first step for you and your significant other. If you're ready to like each other again and be on the same team, this is the program for you. Sign up today.
Welcome back to Tyra TV. Today we're talking about you and your relationship with money. And how it impacts your relationship with each other. There are so many ways, so many nuances that money creates where it can create really a, a bonding experience between each other where you're actually moving towards your goals together or it can create all kinds of dissension between the two of you. You know, if you spend money like it's growing on trees, right? You can't get enough of it because it's always there, right? You're always just grasping. You know, that can create dissension, discourse, distrust when you're always spending money, when you're living above your means. I don't know if you've ever done that, but I sure have. Now, being able to recognize the impact that money has on you and why you have this emotional attachment to money is really important. It's one of the keys on how you actually have a healthy outlook on what money is and the value of it in your relationship. Not just, hey, you know what? Money will solve all of our problems. We need more money. That's not a healthy attitude. When Ron and I first got together, I hated spending money. Ron loved spending money. And so it was constant conflict between us because I would say, where's that $20? And Ron would say, well, hey, well, I went to the store. Remember that meal we had last night? That was that $20. And I would get so frustrated because for me, money represented security. And as Ron went to prison, actually, it, it actually triggered inside of me even more of a control issue around money because we went from a place of just utter extreme poverty. So as I began to work really hard and move from a place of poverty to middle class, I still didn't like to spend money because I felt like, oh no, I never wanna be that poor again. You know, what we're talking about is why is it important to be on the same page? You're a couple, you're growing together, you wanna to dream together, you wanna to be in harmony together. But if you're still stuck, it's about me, it's my way or the highway, what's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. If you're still stuck there, there's no trust in relationship. You can't grow together. If you have separate checking accounts and you're not letting each other know what's in the accounts or mm -hmm. you know what, I spend what I spend, I have my allowance, you got, I got my savings, I got my checking account because I got my job and you you got your job and you got your savings account. You know, this is not harmony. Yep. This is two people just maybe being roommates. Right, coexisting We're together, not really connecting and building something together. You know, not very many couples get to the place of so much trust and in it together where they actually have a joint checking account anymore. It used to be automatic. Of course we have a joint account. We are married, we're one family, we are one unit striving towards one goal. And then over time, that idea of oneness has really kind of dissipated and now each couple, each individual has their own goals, their own financial goals that are separate and it keeps you from really being truly intimate. And what we want to see is what we're hoping that you can get out of today's episode and this, what we're talking about, is really that if you want to grow, you got to do it together. If you want to be financially free, you got to do it together. You're one. You're a married couple. You're in a relationship. You're in this together. Win or lose, mm -hmm. you're in it together. And so my adverse reaction to risk actually came to a head when, when we were like, okay, we've got to move. We've got to move to a bigger place. And it actually was with our office. And Ron was like, why are you so afraid to take on bigger risk? Because we're growing. We have to have a bigger space or we're going to suffocate it. And it really made me take a hard look at, you know what, my own fear about being so cautious that it was actually suffocating growth in our relationship, in our family, also in our, in our business. And so Ron, who actually, I was gonna say, uh, what would be the word, loves risk taking, right? He's a big risk taker. And so as we came together, we realized that between us, there was balance. The, the adventure of taking on calculated risk, where we knew the risk, but we also knew that we could sustain the loss if indeed the risk, the worst thing happened. And so we began to really grow and explode in our relationship, in our finances and in our organization. But I didn't do this by myself. I didn't say, you know what, since you're not gonna do it, I'm doing it anyways. That's not how a relationship works. In order to have a win-win experience, right? In order for me to know, okay, Kathy, with our finances, you know, I want us to be, I want us to work together. I want it to bring harmony mm -hmm. in this, in this decision making. I will not move until we're in agreement. Right, because if I moved and we're not in agreement and I put the executive order down, you know what, I'm the man in this relationship, we're doing this, and it crashes and burns, this is gonna deteriorate our relationship because we weren't in it together. But when you're in it together, what we've learned is, why is this important? Because there's been times where we have crashed and burned. I, we made a decision together mm -hmm. and it didn't turn out the way we were hoping it, but guess what? 
We were still good because we did it together. And even better than good, it actually strengthened our relationship because we took the adventure together. When we come back, we're gonna talk to you about how. How can you move from a place of total independence and maybe fear and into a place of interdependence and actually joyfully doing life together? So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome to Tyro. I'm Ron Tijerina. And I'm Kathy Tijerina. And Ron and I are the co-creators of Tyro. Tyro is a Latin word, which means apprentice, novice, someone learning something new, a warrior. Your job isn't to extract value from your friends, your family, or your community. Your job is to create value, to create value in every situation that you find yourself in, to help others become more successful. So what I want you to do is I want you to list three things that you add to your friendships, to your family, and to your community. Listen, you are fighting every day for something, and maybe you don't even know what you're fighting for, but when Tyro comes into your life, it's there not only to empower you, but to give you a clear vision and a clear direction of what you're fighting for. So really what Tyro means is to fight for your legacy, to become a leader in your home, your community, and your workplace. Hello guys, I'm Tremaine Hall. Lead coach of the Tyro Fit Skittles program. And I'm Brandon T. Arena, the Senior Director of Tyro Support Services. We partnered together to bring you such an amazing workout program that's going to take you to the next level. Because there is a measure of joy and a measure of pain in everybody's life. So when we think about shock and the impact of shock, Typically, people don't find themselves stuck in shock. Most of the time, people can navigate out of that. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to think of a time that you experienced shock in your life, and we want you to write it down. Welcome back to Tyra TV. Today we're talking about you and your relationship with money. And how it impacts your relationship with each other. And really we're looking at what is the litmus test of true trust and security around finances in a relationship. And one of them is having a joint bank account. Because if there's not trust, there's not security, you are not going to work hard all week, put your money in the same pot that your partner has their money. You know, so how do you make this work? How do you how do you really have a, a harmony when it comes to money? Because we know money can cause discourse, can cause bitterness, can cause greed, can cause a lot of negative things in a relationship when you don't what? Number one, talk about it. Mm -hmm. You must talk about money. Talk about how you feel about spending money. Talk about your goals. Talk about from your own personal vantage point. Talk about money. Talk about the things that are, um, that are really holding you back. And as you talk about it together, you both will get a clear picture about your financial wealth and your financial health. You know, when you're thinking about talking about your relationship with money, you're in a relationship, you're bringing from what your upbringing and your own personal family life, you're bringing that mentality on your relationship with money into this relationship. So maybe how were your parents with money? How were the people in your family with money? Were they always spending? Were they living check by check? Mm -hmm. Or were they always just hoarding the money, saving it and saving it and saving it? And you went through life without necessities maybe. You always lived in a poverty mindset and a poverty lifestyle, but you had money. Maybe you had a lot of money and you grew up in an extravagant lifestyle, but now you can in a relationship where you don't have any money and you want to still practice that lifestyle. This is where you got to talk about it. This is why it's really important to talk about money. So after you've talked about money and you both have shared your own relationship, your hangouts, right, about money, the next step towards getting to that place of unity is talk about your goals together and set some goals together, some financial goals. Do you wanna buy a house? Do you wanna buy a car? Do you wanna have so much money in the bank? What is it that you both can agree on as far as financial goals that are gonna build you the life together that you're looking for? 
And the third thing is to design a budget together that the two of you can live with, right? And when we talk about live with, we're talking about one that's flexible, one that can grow, one that is not such a hard place, but that you can come back and look at and say, you know what, are we happy with this budget? How are we doing with this budget? Do we need to change some things in the budget? Because that's about having a healthy relationship, looking at it for what it is, listening to one another and growing together. So as you develop your budget, your budget should reflect the goals. You know, first you've talked about money, then you set goals together, and now you're actually putting a budget in place to actually put action behind that. So Kathy and I are in agreement of our budget that we designed together, right? We came into an agreement, this is how we're gonna live, this is how we're gonna spend our money. And this is what brings harmony in our relationship, that we're in agreement with how it's supposed to flow. Now. Your budget is gonna look much different than our budget. So Ron and I are coming to this place and we're like, you know, I have my ideas, my belief system. He has his ideas and his belief system and we each have our own different emotional attachment to money. So we came together and we said, this is what works for us. You have to talk about it. You have to know what your goals in life are and that will dictate how you budget your money. But the one thing that we all have in common as couples is being able to set goals together and reach those goals together. That transcends our own belief systems, our own individual feelings about money. When we come together as a couple and we set that, it builds so much intimacy. And remember, one of the key litmus tests on how much trust there is in this relationship, on whether or not we're actually striving towards the same goal, is having that joint checking account. So fellas, listen, this is where you humble yourself, right? I know this is the machismo, this is my money, this is the highway. That's not a healthy relationship. When you're willing to come together and you're willing to sit down and you're willing to talk about it, put all your cards on the table, right? Let's look at it. What are your dreams together? In order to achieve what you're trying to build, you have to be honest and you have to humble yourself. Now, these things sound really simple, but they're really not as simple. It's, you know, it's a simple process, but it's not gonna be easy. Talking about money can, can bring all kinds of emotions out. So make sure when you talk about it, you're sitting in a safe place. Maybe it's, you know, eating your favorite snacks and foods in a place that you love to be and say, okay, we're both totally relaxed, let's start the process. So when we come back, we're gonna wrap all this up. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. One day, he invited me to attend these classes he earned for taking part in the Tyra program. I thought it was just a way to get extra visits, but I went and there I saw a different man. My once estranged four-year-old son now sees me as a hero, as do my two stepchildren. I'm proud to say that I've just achieved two full years of continuous sobriety. Today I'm a father, friend, neighbor, a man of honor and integrity a man worth following. Without this program, there's no doubt I would have been a statistic. I have to give the Ridge Project and the Tyro classes a great big thank you for finding the man I married. So, to the Ridge Project and all my other Tyro brothers, I'd like to say thank you, God bless you, and here's to another year of being leaders in a society wonderful enough to give people like me a second chance at the American dream. Welcome back to Tyro TV. Today we're talking about money and the impact it has on your relationship. Too many times we've seen couples let money and their disagreement about money disintegrate the relationship. And so that's why it's so important that you begin early to have those conversations about how are you going to manage your assets, your money together. You know, when you think about that, how do you manage your money is really how do you manage each other? How do you handle one another and money? Because you're a team and money is just a tool to enhance the team. But if, if, the, if money is dictating how you live and how you, you love one another, then it's out of place. It's not, you're not in the right sequence. Mm -hmm. Your relationship should be dictating how your money acts for you. One team, one goal. We're the team, we set our goals together. So if you have never talked about money, do it now. Set a time, set a date to begin talking about your assets and your money and how you're gonna actually achieve your goals together. As you build out your, your goals and your dreams together and you put an action plan, which is your budget around it, you will find that you are much more excited about not spending money or spending money because each of those things will be contributing to your lifelong goals. 
So now you're really finding balance in your relationship. You're finding that you can achieve your goals. You can achieve your dreams. Why? Because now you know how to activate the key principles on savings, checking, and all these things to help you achieve what you as a couple are dreaming about doing. And remember, you're working jointly together so that joint account is really gonna help you reach your goals. If you don't feel comfortable having a joint account, keep talking. Figure out what it is in your relationships that causing one of you to not feel safe and secure in trusting the other with your money. One more thing before we close out is I wanna share with you that I don't keep secrets from Kathy. All of my money, the bank statements, everything that we have is an open book. There's no lock and key. I don't keep her out of that part of my life. Why? Because we're in this together. And I wanna encourage you fellas to understand there are no secrets in your relationship. If you really wanna grow, if you really wanna expand your horizon with your significant other, then, then become an open book. Let her know your dreams. Let her know what you're trying to achieve and that together you can do it. So if money is a big issue in your relationship and there's no trust around money, then you've got some work to do to figure out what needs to happen in your relationship for you guys to get on the same page. And so we wanna encourage you to begin that process today. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your journey. And we hope what we said today will help you in your relationship. So until next time, always remember that we are rooting for you.